Hello everyone and welcome to another Metastock webinar. We are so excited to have you here today. My name is Kelly Clement. I am going to be your YouTube host today. I'll be here in the background making sure all the magic works. So thanks for joining us today. In a few minutes we'll be bringing on Rahul Mohindar and Jeff Gibby who are be our YouTube our webinar presenters today. So excited to have them coming on. So I'm just going to quickly check, make sure everything's working. I'll be right back with you. Looks like everything is up and working. It looks like we are ready to go here in about six and a half minutes. Uh, just a couple of bits of information while you are logging in, while you're getting ready. Uh, as you're coming into the room, make sure to say hello as you come in. Just uh, give us a quick uh, hello. Tell us where you're coming in from. We're here in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, where we're experiencing weird weather. Last week we had record-breaking snow. This week we're having record-breaking uh, temperatures. Kind of crazy. So. Uh, as, so make sure to say hello, tell us where you're coming in from. We'd love to hear from people as they come into the room, uh, where you are, where you're listening from. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and just quickly, uh, while we're waiting here, uh, if you haven't heard of Rahul, our presenter today, he is awesome. Uh, we're very excited to have Rahul in the room. He is always a great instructor, has a lot of great things to say about the market. So we're really excited to have him here with us. It's been a bit since we've had him in the room. So we are excited to have him here today. Um, let me just go check in with the presenters, make sure they are up and running. And then I have a few more things to cover with you. I'll be right back. Everything looks to be set over on the other side. We're all ready to go. So we are checked in, set up. Now, a couple things I did tell you that I wanted to let you know about coming up. One, uh, we actually do have our spring sale going on right now. So if you go to, let me bring up the page here if I can. I can make my magic work over here. Well, looks like my magic, uh, there we go, here we go, okay. If you go to metastock.com, click on our homepage, uh, and then if you just click on this, man, we're having a good time here. If you click on that, it's time for our spring event, Save Big Now, you can see all of our sales going on, what's going on. And then on the side, if you click on events, so here, first of all, I'll click on the, it's time for our spring event. And this will take you to our spring sales event where you can take advantage of all of our different sales going on uh, right now. Uh, let's go back. Uh, we also do have a Traders Summit coming up. So if you come up to metastock.com and click on events, and then scroll down to Traders Summit right here. You'll be able to see the list of all the presenters coming up for that. Uh, we have Steve Bigelow, uh, Alex, excuse me, Tyler Wood. Uh, you'll see myself speaking that day. Martha Stokes, Anne Marie, uh, Jacqueline, and Kevin Nelson. So we've got a great lineup of different presenters, different things going on. So make sure to join us for that. 
that is going to be a great event as well. So looking forward to that coming up. That's in two weeks from Monday. So about to 10 days is when we're looking forward to that. Okay. Um, let me go do all my final checks. We'll make sure everything's ready to go and we'll get started here in about two minutes. Hello, Greg Lewis. Uh, hello, Rajamusha. Uh, hopefully I got that right. Uh, so welcome today to both of you as well. So let's go ahead and check, make sure everything's uh, all set for the, for the presentation. I'll be right back with you. Looks like we are all set to go. So one thing I will tell you is make sure to ask questions during the presentation. If you have any questions, we'll uh, pass those along to Rahul. Uh, make sure he gets them and can answer your questions. Uh, but again, we're looking forward to this great event today with Rahul. Uh, it's always great to hear from Rahul. Again, he's a great pre presenter. So let's go ahead and get uh, the presentation going today and enjoy and let us know. Thanks. Hello, everybody. It's Jeff Gibby. We're going to read a legal disclaimer right now. Let's go. All right. Today's demonstration is designed to, to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sub, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So hope you enjoyed that. I uh, want to welcome everybody for coming. We have a, a really great attendance on uh, YouTube right now and in GoToWebinar. If you are watching this on YouTube, what I would say real quick is uh, make sure to like the video. Uh, that helps us out a great deal and we appreciate it. We're also doing all kinds of really good analytics focus videos two, three times a week sometimes. So if you subscribe to the channel, you get notified every time we go live. So with that out of the way, I want to say thanks for coming. It's good to see you. I really uh, I hope you're doing well. It's uh, starting to get spring here in Utah. Uh, and uh, it's, it really, I just hope you're enjoying yourself. So our, for, our guest today is going to be Rahul Mohinda. Rahul is a good friend of mine. Uh, he's been a business uh, partner of Metastock for longer than I've actually been an employee, which is actually saying quite a bit. I think he's on 27 years now. Uh, Rahul is a really, really good technician. Uh, one of the methods that he talks about it called the RMO methodology is something that has been built into Metastock since version 10. 
it's a it's a fantastic method. It's actually the first method I started trading with, uh, real money with. Uh, he's also he's a very very talented uh, system designer technician, and he's trained a lot of students in India over the years on how to trade. So he does a really really good job presenting. He's got a brand new class that talks about volume today. Is telling me about it. So. I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. So, Rahul, let's go ahead and bring you in here, and uh, I'll get, I'll help you uh, make sure that you're all set up. How are you doing today, first of all? Doing well, thank you, Jeff. It's always cool. good to be on one of these shows of yours. We we love having you. Uh, uh, we uh, we have you. Uh, it's always it. We always love it when you can make some time for us, Rahul. So, I just sent the screen share over. It should have popped up and said, "Hey, do you want to share your screen?" And I can All see right. your screen. So, there you go. Uh, um, I can confirm that I can hear you well. I can see your screen. And uh, that's my cue to get out of the way. Uh, the floor is yours, Rahul. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, but uh, above all, I'd like to thank the entire team at Metastock for, again, uh, showing their continuous uh, commitment to the trading and investing fraternity in terms of doing these webinars, doing such educational events, be it live, be it online. I think the consistency of Metastock, uh, the commitment of Metastock is always showing when you know they come forward to help traders and users like yourselves or, uh, you know, it, at each step. So today's session is slightly different from what I've usually done, where I've given you an overview of the inbuilt RMO and an insight into the ATM. I wanted to talk a little bit about you know, integrating volume because we pay a lot of attention to the price action. We pay a lot of attention to various indicators that get us breakouts. But I think it's about time we also learn more about the volume component. Now, a lot of volume pieces are built into my uh, RMO ATM add-on. And uh, I'd like to share with you how we use this, how we integrate it, whether you use the ATM, whether you use the original RMO, I think there's a lot to take away from the fact that the volume is a very essential ingredient. In fact, if I may put it this way, volume is equal to money. Many people would define it differently. The number of trades per day, the number of transactions, the, the amount of shares bought and sold, the total of that. So I think people have different ways to say it, but I think it's synonymous as saying is big volume is big money. Small volume is small money. In other words, it represents the interest and the level of commitment of money that is on a particular stock or symbol that you're trading. So if something has very high volume, it shows a lot of uh, interest, a lot of money that's rotating in at that point. So I think we need to take away something from understanding why is there so much money right there and what's really going to be the turnout from there. So that's something we need to learn how to read, learn how to integrate. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I think when we do any kind of trading analysis, uh, whether you use whichever set of indicators, a complete system is made of you know, three cores, if I may put it that way. One is the trend core, which is really the core indicators or systems that you use to detect trend breakouts, right? to detect the market move that's forthcoming. So be it someone who likes to use uh, the RMO, or someone who likes to use a MACD, or someone who uses averages, someone who uses the breakout catcher, whatever your system is, I mean, to detect trend breakouts. You know, I'm going to talk to you more from an RMO and an ATM perspective, but a trend perspective is really the first core, the most important core, the most important stepping stone for you to take that trade. And I think once you take that trade, the next stage comes is managing that same trade understanding how the momentum is building in that trend. Is the momentum continuing? Do we keep holding on? Do we trail our stop loss? Do we exit? So I think judging that momentum, and I think one of the great tools within the ATM, if I could let the cat out of the bag, it is uh, you know the trend decider suite. That's an amazing tool which can help you gauge what the momentum is. And I think the underdog in everything is volume because volume has a bit of a, a triple role if i could put it that way not only does volume break out or you know high volume points uh, point to levels at which you could have a potential trend reversal it also suggests to you that uh, uh, you know there are breakouts 
which could be happening and you know that more importantly tells you that if you've got a breakout of volume uh, there's a new rotation of money that's coming in on that stock so i think it's not just telling you where a market could potentially reverse or whether a market's broken out but it also confirms your core setup so you know you may be using let's say the uh, the rmo system or the breakout catcher system and if you have above average volumes or a breakout on volume it confirms those setups so there's a very strong role that volume plays be it that of a confirmatory nature which is how most people like to look at volume that you know volume confirms the trend there's that classical saying that if price goes up and volume goes along with it that's a confirmation if price moves down with an incline in volume that suggests that that downtrend is a strong downtrend so beyond this confirmatory role volume has this ability to give you breakouts and reversals and i think we are not paying enough attention to these minor elements and that's what really makes volume the major element so let's uh, dive straight into a, a study within the atm called the strength weakness index or swi for short so the swi has volume as its core ingredient it's really the most important ingredient in terms of calculating this index and what is the strength weakness index it's trying to measure the amount of volume a stock went up with versus the amount of volume the stock has come down with so in other words it's trying to study that balance it's trying to understand that has the market really broken out from a volume perspective and not just a price perspective and you know that's what's going to strengthen our whole opinion about it so e what it simply does is it plots a line across your bars or candles and if the price is above that swi line it's bullish if it's below that swi line it's bearish how is that line being calculated let me repeat it's studying when the market went up what were the volumes versus what were the volumes when the market came down so in other words if the market went up with say 100000 shares and if it's come down with 110000 shares obviously the balance has shifted so that whole study needs to be done by the indicator because no more is volume traded all at one go or at one time it's accumulated and distributed within a trend and that is decoded with the swi or the strength weakness index so just looking at that red line which is by you know dissecting the chart here virtually you will notice that wherever the bars or candles are above that red line you are bullish so on the left hand side where you see the blue colored bars that's a bullish phase of the market and where you see the red colored bars where it's broken the red line that is where the volumes have tilted towards the downside now mind you this is no study of moving averages this is no study of any price based indicator the only study is that of volume that has price gone up with how much volume versus the volume that it has when the market started moving down so you know if i just dive into a, a you know a very short term chart a 5 minute chart of tesla and mind you this is not correct current absolutely but you know probably till half an hour ago if you looked at the price action on tesla one of those very volatile stocks you look at the last 3 or 4 trading sessions you had that sharp drop you know from 185 all the way down to 176 it was a nice you know four or five percent virtually that kind of a drop and you could see that the red bars trickled in likewise when you had the breakout up here which was on the 10th of april around noon or you know on the afternoon you saw the blue bars trickling in so all this while when the market went up it was still all red bars the swi was not able to get conquered it's only here where you saw some trickles of blue bars which come in so as soon as you saw the first two three blue bars the market's broken out of that swi line it's giving you that perspective that at least just on the count of money just on the count of volume you have a buy setup now you should couple this with price based indicators i'm not trying to say go 100% solo just on volume i think any system is complete when you blend it with a price driven study and a volume driven study but what i'm trying to say is that the underdog is volume the volume is the evidence volume is the money don't ignore it a lot of us are very busy using price driven tools uh, you know averages the rmo the breakout catchers 
all that's important, but I think the essential thing is if the volume's also with you, you get that clear-cut confirmation. And mind you, this is so advanced. As the name suggests, ATM, Automated Trend Modules. It's also automated that it tells you that the volume is shifted towards the upside. Like if you look at the last 10 bars on Tesla, which is, you know, this is a five minute chart, very short term, but you can see around $185, you already got the signs that you got the first two red bars over there and, you know, the volumes all toppled up. Now, if you couple that up with more studies, of course, that gets, uh, you know, more and more confirmed. So let's say you like the RMO, you can paste the RMO on it. You like the breakout catcher paste the breakout catcher. You like using moving averages, use the moving average. So you can use any price driven study you like, but I think this is such a clean cut way to analyze volume rather than going bar by bar and trying to understand and dissect, oh, what does this high volume mean? Or what does that high volume mean? The good thing is we're measuring the movement of price and volume, that rhythm, that whole equation that you read about in classic technical analysis that if price goes up with volume, that's a strong trend. So you can see here price went up, you know, towards the first half of 10th of April in the morning, you had all red bars because you couldn't go through the SWI. And if you look down at the volume, maybe the volume was not good enough to kind of undo this whole drop that happened prior to it. It's only much later that things kicked in in its favor and the balance of volume shifted. Uh, and that's when you got a breakout. So if you look at this, this is a five minute chart, but let's just jump to a totally different perspective because not everyone's a pure day trader. Let's give you a 30 minute chart you know, someone who's swing trading for a couple of days, not just holding for one day, maybe holding two, three, four days, you know, maybe more. You can get an idea over here. This is a chart of Google. And, uh, you know, uh, you can see again over here, the whole rally that you saw March, you know, at least second half of March is what I've got. That whole up move beautifully locked in with that SWI. And again, the correction, which came from $107 all the way down, you know, a good 7% drop which you had, uh, you know, towards the end of March, the fag end of March, you had those red bars and that broke through. Then again, the whole, you know, April first week was a fantastic week for, for Google where it broke out at about 103 and just pushed its way up another six, 7% up. So, you know, it's beautiful to see that just a price driven, I mean, a volume driven tool can give can deliver this to you. I mean, we're not even blending in the price elements. If you look at the recent, the last 20, 30 bars, we're below that SWI, which is uh, why we expect some kind of a pressure. Now, of course, you've got to follow this up with price driven indicators. You've got to watch that, you know, the market stays below that SWI. It's doing that whole calculation for you. And, you know, you can put things into a real life feel and perspective. You know, a lot of you, who, who don't know uh, much about me, uh, I should have probably introduced myself a little better earlier on, but I am talking to you as a real life trader, someone who trades not just US equities, you know, Asian equities right up to Australia, India. Uh, so I've kind of uh, looked at various spectrums of the market. I'm a very active trader investor in all of these markets. I continue to follow, uh, you know, uh, commodities as well, although I'm not a super active commodities trader, but I definitely uh, look at that. Uh, and, you know, futures and options. So I'm, I'm quite heavy on it. I mean, I'm not someone who's into the business of uh, selling recommendations or I don't run a brokerage business. Uh, I'm here to kind of equip you in terms of becoming more individual, more hands free with your approach, because technology does so much for us today. I mean, a tool like Metastock, the power of that scanner, the expert advisor, it's so amazing that, you know, we can crunch in so much of data. And I can tell you, I've been seeing Metastock from the DOS days and, you know, right up to, it runs in my family where I saw my dad use Metastock, you know, version three. And, you know, we built on from there where we had, you know, the age of floppy disks and zip drives and, uh, you know, even getting to a small floppy disk drive was a big deal. So I think Metastock's come a long way in terms of improvements. And, you know, every year, the way it keeps upgrading and improving, uh, technology is totally on our side. I mean, today it's so easy to do those things which uh, was so difficult to do. But I think what what's ruining it for us is that there's so much of an information overload. One of the things I keep telling Kelly and Jeff is when we travel, I keep sharing, I wish I could shorten that indicator quick list because with 200 indicators out there, it's like entering a buffet with 200 dishes and it's very difficult to choose what you want to eat. And if you eat too much, you're going to land up at the hospital first, then uh, 
enjoying that one meal. So I think it's all about focus. It's all about choosing tools which do a lot of things. So something like the SWI may be presented to you very easily and looks very easy. But you know, under the hood, there's a lot going on. And that's what the ATM is all about. It's not to deliver to you you know, 20 different indicators. If I can give you six to seven solid core strategies, that's what the ATM is about. And they will factor in various time frames. They will factor in all the various elements so that you don't have to go through the manual hassle of drawing lines, looking for divergences, you know, manually trying to factor in what is the volume doing, et cetera, et cetera. So SWI, if I could wrap it up, is one of the easiest go-to tools for volume. If you want a volume perspective, switch on that SWI. It colors the bars automatically. It draws this line. So you just need to right-click, apply the template ATM SWI, and that will show it to you. Now, another very interesting tool to use is the breakout catcher. And if you look at the breakout catcher, you have to look at, uh, if you look at the breakout catcher, I think I've kind of lost my audio. Yeah, all right. Uh, if you look at the breakout catcher, this is another very easy tool to use, which detects price breakout. So it's not a volume breakout here, but let me share with you the other interesting element with it. It's the fact that you have something called the zone detector on the top. So what is the breakout catcher doing for me? First of all, on the price, it's marking these three different colors, blue colors, an olive or a khaki color, and a red color. As you may be uh, guessing that the blue color indicates a buy breakout. And obviously, you want to catch that first blue when it comes in. And if you're selling, you want to catch that first red bar. So every time you see the first blue in chain, that's where you're looking at a buy setup. When you see the first red, that's when you're looking at a sell setup. And subsequently, you're looking at the first blue for a buy. Now, I'm talking to you primarily first from an entry perspective. I think half our problem is that we are not entering right, which is why we have a lot of troubles as well. So refine your entry to an extent where you, even if you set a financial objective towards your trading and a simple trailing model using something like the trend decider, you should be able to get through this well. So let's focus on, you know, how do you refine these entries? For example, let's look at this solitary blue bar that you see in the middle of my chart, somewhere around the 8th or 9th of uh, March. So this is again a chart of Google. I'm looking at a daily interval. That solitary blue bar that you see around the 7th or 8th, I'm guessing that's the date. We're looking at a blue bar. But if you look on the top, we call this a dormant mode. Now, why did I call this a dormant mode? This is a, the zone detector study on top. If you see it flat at a value of 0, that's dormant. We don't want to be trading there. But if I look at this blue bar, which comes maybe around the 15th or 16th of March, that blue bar has what we call a hyperactive mode, where you see the zone detector well above uh, you know, the zero line. You see, you see it's either at zero or it's at one. And if you have that as a zone fill, in other words, there are areas where it's at a value of one and there's no histogram, that's called active. And if you look at this one over here, this is called hyperactive because it has a zone fill. Hyperactive, why? Because it's measuring volatility and it's measuring volume. So you may manually want to go down and look, okay, maybe above average volume, maybe the volatility is perked up. So it's got the elements of price action. You know, let's put it this way. Nothing can move without money. If there's no money, it's a fake out and not a breakout, right? So this blue bar over here in a dormant mode needs to be looked with a lot of suspect, clearly because now you don't need to manually go and study volume. You just look at the fact that it's dormant. There's a problem. If I look at this red, you know, that's a good sell because you're in hyperactive mode. This buy, it's in hyperactive mode, right? So you want to go take the trades which are in hyperactive mode as the essential trade. Can you trade in an active mode? Yes, most certainly. But can I trade in a dormant mode? I'm going to avoid taking a trade in a dormant mode. Above all, when you trade the breakout catcher, you're trying to look for the first in chain, the first breakout. So after a series of blue, the first red. So in other words, these red circles that you see after that, these are add-on trades, add-on trades. It's the first blue and the first red where we would say is the true breakout. That's the price breakout. But the minute you couple it with the zone detector and zone fill, this study is what tells you that if I'm at zero, I'm dormant. If I'm at a value of one, I'm active. And if I have a fill, 
or a histogram on it that's hyperactive because it has both elements of volume and volatility. So let's do a quick recap on how this works. If you see red bars, and this is the first in chain, that's the breakout. What do you see over here? The zone is hyperactive. You definitely want to take the trade, right? If you see blue colored bars over here, and you look up and say that this is dormant, I am not going to be trading over here because I'll wait. There's not enough more money. There's not enough volume. This could well be a fake out and not break out. So look at it with suspect, right? So wherever you see these red circles that I've drawn, these are all signals that have occurred in a dormant mode. So just look at the red circles. I got a blue bar over here, dormant. I look at the red bars, dormant. So I, I need to be chasing. Now let's look at the last blue bar, the last circle, the last blue circle there. That's come up on hyperactive, and that's what I want to be taking. So this whole business of ironing out and you know trying to tell you that this is a stock that's dormant, this is a stock that's active or hyperactive, that's where we want to be taking the trade. So I think the zone detector is again a fascinating tool which irons it out. So like you see in the middle of this chart, you've got blue colored bars. But those blue colored bars are no good simply because it's in a dormant mode. But when the red color bar comes in and you see the mode is hyperactive, that's when you want to take the trade. So I think let's try and factor in the element that you may be getting a price breakout, but since the volume and the volatility is missing, it lacks the core ingredient of money. And therefore, a kickstart on the trend or a catalyst on the trend looks very difficult. Let's put it this way, without enough money and without enough price action and buyers and sellers, how is a trend even going to come into formation? So I think this is what you know, a lot of us tend to miss out. Now here's a, you know, an example with an Australian stock. You can see over here the various uh, circles that I've drawn, the red circles that you see, the three red circles. These are signals all in dormant mode. And that's because the zone detector is at a value of zero zero even the first one if you look up it may be looking like uh, you know it's up and it's actually at zero by the time you the bar is formed you're right there you're at zero so all of these are in dormant but when you see the blue breakout that's hyperactive so it's fairly easy if you look at it the breakout catcher is not only finding the breakouts for you on the bottom x axis it's marking those strong and weak zones so it's finding the price breakout and coupling it with the fact that the volume and volatility is there to confirm it. So that whole statement, you know, the price breakout is confirmed with the volume, has the foundation of volume. That's what's uh, very relevant. So in my opinion, if you can understand that any price breakout that you do needs to be coupled with volume, and it's only then that you can uh, really take a trade and so keep that this volume element so one is the swi which is a very easy quick checkup and second is when you use a tool like the breakout catcher you can of course look at the zone detector and iron out or smoothen the signals out even further here's another interesting uh, combination now in this case i'm looking at a chart of apple and this is a daily chart and i've tried to combine all three elements that i just taught you and it may look a little uh, crowded my chart but please bear with me i think the idea is to show you how one can uh, survive various you know phases of the market let's look at this blue bar over here let's start with the first one back in november 2022 i'm not going to be buying this because neither does it cross the high because when you see a blue bar i wanted to cross the high to buy that's one of the rules and you also want to see that the market is not dormant. In this case, it's dormant. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do this cell because, again, it's dormant. How about this one over here? You got red bars. The SWI is kicked in. You can see the volume is kind of above average. And you're hyperactive. Good to go. You want to go ahead with this. So I want you to look at volume with uh, you know three different elements. And let's recap. What are the three elements? The zone detector is one where you see it in active or hyperactive zone. Second is the SWI, which will look at the entire balance of volume in terms of is price going up with volume uh, or the trend is confirmed with volume. And the third is look at the fact that there is a moving average, which is a 50 period exponential average on the volume, which is plotted by default. The templates that we provide you for the RMO trade model and the various studies, we already have this in by default. And there's a reason why it's there. It's because you should understand when you get the breakout, 
I want to be at least slightly above average, right? I don't want to be under average. So I'm going to take this kind of a trade because that is definitely uh, looking like a good move. And where will I take the trade below the low? And mind you, for starters, if you just look at that move, you at least got a nice 5 7% kind of drop from those levels. Again, look at the blue bar that comes in mid-January. I'm not going to start the trade here because A, it's dormant. B, the SWI is not confirming. The SWI is above the price. C, the volume is not even above average. So I'm a bit suspect here. So in other words, you, the breakout catcher might be sensing a price breakout, but I'm not ready. But it's only over here where I've marked the circle that I'm ready to go with this trade and accept this trade. Because at least two out of three elements are together. I've gone through the SWI level and the, price, the volume has gone above average. Now you may say, look, the zone detector hasn't kicked into hyperactive. Yes, it hasn't. But as I told you, you will never get everything. You know, sometimes uh, it's like a doctor trying to diagnose a disease. He may run three tests. And if two are positive, he's going to probably confirm and go with it and move ahead, right? He's not going to wait for a three out of three each time. So there are times you've got to take that decision that you've got the balance. So for example, let's look at this red bar that you saw towards the 25th of February. The red bar is there as a price breakout, but what's happened? It's dormant. The zone detector is dormant. The volume is under average. The SWI is still positive. In other words, if price is trading above the SWI, that's a positive. So you're not going to take this short. You don't even have one element confirming over here. So if I'm looking at, you know, finally, towards 15th of March, where I got the blue bars trickling in, that's where I can see not only is the volume above average, I'm above the SWI, I'm above at hyperactive. And that's what gives you a nice spin on that trend. You got a nice, uh, you know, eight, nine percent spin off from those levels. So the good thing is, this is looking at how you can confirm the breakout catcher with the volume, you know, the three pieces of volume, if I could put it that way. And to recap, what are the three pieces I'm putting for you is, Check that you're above average. Check that you're above the SWI line. Check you're in active or hyperactive zone. And at least have two with you uh, before you go ahead. Now, another very interesting tool that we have within the ATM is, uh, is the counter trend indicator. And the counter trend indicator, again, is something which spins off pure volume. So it's really looking at, you know, there's some, sometimes a phase or a, where you suddenly have a spurt in volume, a very high volume bar, or maybe a couple of bars which are together or a cluster of bars which have very high volume. So what it does for you is it spikes up to a level of plus two or minus two. And you don't need to really bother so much about the internals. Uh, the plus two is basically occurring when you have a spike up in volume and the minus two is having you know, then you have a spike down in volume. And when that's happening, you're really looking at a breakout from those zones. Uh, and what we do is we simply paste, when you apply the template of the counter trend, we simply paste buy and sell stamps. And, you know, this is a Google chart. And I'm again going to give you a different flavor. I showed you five minute, I showed you a 30 minute. I'm now showing you a 65 minute. Now you may say, you know, what's the sense of this 65 minute? And this is where I talk to a lot of traders from a practical perspective. Again, today is an overview session. Today, you know, when I go in depth, I get into all these minuscule details. For example, this chart doesn't have post-close data. I've kept the data just till 4 p.m. I don't want that 402 tick, you know, because that's going to give me an unnecessary dash at the end of each day. Secondly, if you trade 390 minutes a day, if I'm looking at a 65 minute interval, I've got, you know, uh, a perfect set of six bars. So what I'm trying to do is uh, if I use the 60 minute chart, think of it this way, I will have six perfect hours, but there'll be one bar which will be 30 minutes. So in other words, that's not theoretically a correct base. So you got a six hour chart. So one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour, six hour, and then half an hour. That's how you get a six and a half hour market represented on an hourly chart. And if I did a 65 minute interval, that is more logical because then I can do 390 divided by 65. You get a perfect six. Uh, so, you know, I'm a little meticulous when it comes to these kind of details. And, uh, you know, probably if you 
have attended my master class or you will attend the you know some of the further education that i do i talk about all these practical influences because sometimes you may have the perfect study but you work it on the wrong base so this is very relevant so when you trade the indian market you should be looking at an interval like the 75 minute because that splits your market into five bars so the idea is to use the correct interval because not every market is trading six hours or seven hours or eight hours you know every market has its own quirks like for example you're, you're trading 390 minutes uh, in the u.s equity market but in the indian market we have a different scale of trading where we are trading maybe 375 minutes so you know you've got to work you know you've got to work you know your way through these so uh, again, each market will have its own uh, times. So I think one has to get into those details. But coming back to the counter trend, it simply stamps buys and sells for you. And how it's doing it is every time it sees a spike of volume up or down, it is clearly giving you an indication of a, a buy stamp or a sell stamp. And this is so crystal clear. And mind you, this is uh, the, in, you know, what you're seeing is two months of Google. Uh, on that 65 minute chart and you can see if I could get the first signal in the chain the first buy and the first sell and the first buy and the first sell what are the filters you should use when you get a buy try and make sure it goes above the high of that bar if you want to further confirm it go above the moving average so some filtration is required if you're trying to sell here try and make sure it goes below the low you have some confirmations so example this is a sell that comes maybe around 18th of March doesn't break the low in other words the trade doesn't really trigger so even though you may see sell written there not worthy of being done this sell can trigger because it does break the low and again couple it with the moving average if you'd like a simple coupling i use more complex couples because that further refines it but if i could just share with you if i got a buy and i clicked through the average i went through this is a 30 period average that i'm using uh, on the 65 minute chart and you can see over here that you know the buy gets very confirmed over here the sell can come in here the buy could be done over here it just gives you that perfect foundation so even if you've got the last three sell signals which have come on google you can see first of all the lows have just about started breaking but when, when it challenges its moving average that's when you have you know when it closes below its moving average that's when you can probably say okay i'm in a more confirmed state of mind in terms of undertaking this trade but it's fantastic how volume alone is generating these buys and sells friends it's nothing else it's just volume it's trying to analyze where you got a cluster or a big bag of volume and seeing if you're breaking out of a zone within that bag of volume and uh, you know you can uh, see what you're missing that everyone's trying to use price driven indicators but our focus is not on the SWI, the zone detector, things like the counter trend indicator. I thought, let me use today's webinar as a session where I could showcase to you that the volume plays such a strong role. Even if you use the counter trend as just an exit mechanism, it's amazing. But again, there's no reason why you wouldn't use such an indicator. So each study that is there within the ATM suite has a certain purpose. The breakout catcher is to get you those price breakouts the zone detectors to confirm those price breakouts with volume the swi is a holistic indi individual take on you know the movement of volume or the balance of volume with the trend is the price going up with volume the counter trend indicator is a sharpshooter because it finds out exact spots of volume that are breaking out and as a spot of volume breaks out it gives you a signal no indicators within the atm suite are really in a repetitive format which is very interesting because i'm not there to give you quantity you know for me to even give you an update on the atm you know for example when we went from atm 2 to 3 or even you know release a new build on version 3 we keep making sure that we've elevated to a point that it benefits the end user we've you know definitely gone up a step and that's when we release an upgrade you know we don't release an upgrade because it's 2023 and therefore it deserves an upgrade we need to have something you know solid if it means two upgrades a year or four or you know no upgrade for two years it, it's it's about you know quality of delivery and you know i think that's where i'm a little different because i don't uh, you know treat this as uh, you know something that i have to do from as a software company that's secondary i think what I'm doing here is trying to help you trade better and make money. And I think that's a very important uh, role that, uh, you know, one has to play that if I'm adding something, there's got to be merit 
in terms of why I'm telling this to you and how I'm going to present my case to you and how I'm going to help you use it. So when you buy the ATM or you subscribe to the ATM, not only are you backed with volumes and you, you know with the you know with manuals and webinars, but we also do these master classes, which uh, you know we we'll, we'll do every year. And you know, uh, Jeff will talk to you more about the next one that's coming up. And you can always be part of those and you know further educate and uh, elevate yourself with it. So if you put on the template, it looks very simple as buys and sells. So one way is okay, I'll just see a buy and sell and buy and sell. No, but I think what you need to do is put it up like this for yourself, maybe with an average, uh, and then put it to you. In fact, I would say that filtration is a must. So while you'll get a lot of signals on chart, lots of buy and sell stamps, you need to look for two or three things. Number one, consider buy signals that are preceded by a downtrend. The name itself is counter trend indicator or CTI. Counter trend. If it's a downtrend and I get a buy, that's what I'm interested in. So look, look back at that chart of Google. When you got the buy maybe in 13th of March or the February the 27th, that's the area where the market was earlier going down, and that's the first buy. That's counter trend, you know? So I'm really looking at that. Similarly, if you're looking for a sell signal, if the market's gone up and then you've got to sell, that's what's relevant, right? We don't want to get, uh, you know, in a downtrend, I'm not looking for a sell. So even if I look at, let's say, this chart over here, let's come somewhere over here and, you know, where you get the sell. The preceding trend is already down. What am I going to do by selling here? I am looking for this buy. This is a counter trend buy because the market going down. That's the first signal. So if you can put in a simple filter, I want to look for buys which are preceded by a downtrend. And I want to look for sells that are preceded by an uptrend. So additional signals in the same direction may be confirmations, but I do not recommend you use them as trades. In fact, I tend to ignore them. Look for quality, chase that first signal, chase that reversal. So counter trend can really give you that reversal feel what you're looking for. You know, let's look at, uh, you know, another space which you could elevate your trades so well. Look at these signals here. You've got a sell, you break the low of that, you're looking at a downward move. You look at these buys which come, I've marked the little rectangle, which are the, which means that, you know, go above the high. The simplest test of strength is cross the high. So when you get a buy signal, buy above the high. Buy, if it doesn't go above the high, that's not good enough, right? So that's a spot you want to buy. If I look at the current over here, that's where the buy comes in. The high is taken out. That's what I'm looking at chasing in terms of an entry. So these are very simplistic signals. Uh, and, you know, if you really want to filter this to you know, in my opinion, the real next level. So without a moving average uh, or anything, this is uh, the QQQ on a 65. Let's look at how you trade on the counter trend with the QQQ. And, uh, you know, this is something which really represents the entire market. It represents your index, the NASDAQ ETF, that is. Uh, and this speaks volumes. So let's look at the first rectangle. You got a sell over here. Notice I marked a brown mark a couple of bars later. I wanted to make sure that I've broken that low and I've got two seller bars. In other words, I've got two bars. What are seller bars? Well, you have two bars in succession which have a lower high and a lower low. So I didn't just sell here. I waited. When do I have two bars in a row that are a lower high and a lower low? Similarly, if you get a buy, you can cross the high the very next bar. But you know, I'm elevating and saying I got these two bars which are higher high, okay? and higher lows so these are called buyers bars so after a buy wait for two buyers bars after a sell look for two sellers bars and that could be defined as two bars that clearly have a pattern of rising highs and rising lows so that's how i'm elevating so look at this cell over here the circle why is the circle no good because you may have gone below it you have closed below it but you had no formation of two sellers bars so when I say two sellers bars, why are these two not? You may have lower lows here, but the highs are not lower. Same here. This is an inside day. This is an outside day. An outside day is where you have a longer high, longer low. So then, you know, you're looking for that two formation where you've got two sellers bars. So that doesn't happen. So you really can't take this trade. So even if you plonk a moving average, that would save you. So here too, you've got to sell on this triangle, on this rectangle. You close below it here. Now, after that, where do you get two sellers bars here? Two bars which have lower highs and lower lows. Doesn't break the low. 
Same thing what's going on over here. You've got to sell. Not a single bar has closed below that 314 marker. And, you know, if that's not happening, I'm not going to be. Then after that closes below, I'm looking for my two sellers bar. So, you know, I elevate to, um, you know, very strong uh, levels where I'm saying, why just a moving average? Let's make it more methodical and let's put more mind to the madness, uh, you know, and have more systematic trading so i think a rule based approach is really what i'm trying to get to and mind you today i'm just showcasing to you just showcasing to you what the atm can do from a point of view of volume now most of you know me the best for my rmo trade model that's built into metastock and why uh, a lot of you love the rmo is because it takes care of three elements the short term trend which is the bar arrows that you see then you have the medium term trend which is the colors on the bar, and then the green oscillator, which is the RMO itself, which detects the primary trend. And as you may already be aware, we are trying to trade in the direction of the primary trend. And what we're seeing is the entire system takes care of short term, medium term, long term. I'm not someone who's going to tell you, look, please look at a daily and a weekly and confirm it, or look at a five and a 15 and confirm it. I just don't belong to that school of thought because let's put it simply, you need to have an indicator which does that for you. It should handle the short term element, the medium term, and the long term element. Why do you need to go through various time frames? Because if you go into various time frames, it's also going to add confusion to you. If a trade goes wrong on the five minute, we are very quick to say, oh no, but the 15 minute looks okay. I think that's the attitude I want us to get out of. Because, you know, I've gone, I've gone through that whole grind where you keep saying, you know, uh, let's change the time frame. I know people who've been day trading on a five minute chart and suddenly they say, but the weekly looks okay, you know, so we'll take it home with us. It's, it's just no sense. I mean, be focused, choose your one time frame, be consistent, follow the same rules, the same stock 10 times in a row to know that you're seven out of 10 correct. So it's a very important thing to keep in mind is that we need to elevate to consistency. We need to have an indicator which handles short term, medium term, long term, and the RMO does it so very well. So. Let's look at the RMO template now, which is inbuilt within Metastock. The arrow represents the short term signal, the up arrow. The blue colored bar is the medium term signal. And then finally, if you look at the axis at the bottom, the RMO bullish, that's the long term. So look, the short term comes first and the medium term ends out, the long term comes in later. We call this a 3D buy point because all three elements agree. Similarly, this is an add on buy on the second vertical because you got an arrow again. The blue colored bar is already there and the RMO continues to be positive. Now, most of you are quite comfortable with this logic. I think you can look at various webinars I've done just on the RMO alone, which take you into further detail. But that on top is the RMO oscillator, the oscillator that I designed, which is part of Metastock now. And you can see the red bars and the RMO negative. The arrow comes in a little early when all the three align. Those are points where you want to cell so all the various vertical lines that i've marked have that alignment of a 3d cell a three-dimensional cell in simple words the red arrow the red colored bars and the negative rmo i could add further more arrows i could even add a, a vertical line over here i could add a vertical line over here but these all come into the garb of add-on trades i need you to focus on the first break or the first time when the rmo shifts from bullish to bearish the first time this rotation from blue bars to red bar happens not the second time and the third time. They add on signals. So three dimensional signals. Now, why did I go into creating something like the armor? Why did I build this for, you know, for myself? Being an active trader you know, for myself, I felt that there's too much of confusion. While the market is going up, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying the RSI is giving you divergences. So, you know, in this entire rally up when Apple was a $30 stock going to $150, everywhere you found a negative divergence so whether it was you know in its journey back in 2018 whether it was a journey in 2021 every time you made newer highs the rsi would give you a negative divergence so i think nothing wrong with the rsi but you know it's not about your spotting negative divergence it's about knowing when will this divergence end and i think the problem is a lot of the crisscross that happens in the macd's and you know the uh, this is a big issue but the RMO, if it's above zero, and you know, you can see that right from 2016, all the way for the next five years, if the RMO was above zero, 
it's above zero. It's bullish. We're not trying to look at the shape, size, or curvature. We're just saying it's above zero in the long term, solid. Concentrate where to buy. Look for the blue arrows. Don't look for the red arrows because the long term trend is up, because the primary trend is established nice and strong. So I try to take out the noise of the divergences and the MACDs and, you know, to, to, it should be a visual affair. You know, when you look at a chart, it should be an absolute pleasure that you look at it and you can gauge the trend. So I think the most important thing I pro probably say is that the RMO helps you trade in the direction of the stronger force, in the direction of that long-term trend, and therefore your focus is the big picture. So when you get very granular into the RMO, you can go into the, all the different rules that I just talked about. These are various points where I'm marked. I am looking for this circle. I'm looking for this point where I've got the blue bar, the buy arrow, the RMO going bullish, and that's when I want to buy. What's wrong over here? What's wrong in this rectangle here? The blue bar is there. The arrow is there. But the RMO is bearish. It's below zero. So don't take that trade. Right? So it's very important for me to understand, uh, you know, like over here too, you've got the blue bar. What's the missing element? The RMO went up. The arrow's kind of stale. And now you should probably wonder that should I buy above this high or should I buy above this? Is there enough volume in this? So, you know, these are the little pieces I'm going to try and help you iron out. Now, fortunately, we've built scans for everything. Not only do we have the wonderful explorers, if you're used to the Metastock scanner, we have explorations which can find you these integrated buy and sell signals. But we also have an application called the Power Screener, which does a live scan for you. Mind you, even if you use end of day data, or the data link feed that is, or you use the live Zenit data feed, it's automatically going to find out which are stocks which have a 3D buy or a 3D sell. And try and understand the difference. There's a 3D sell with two arrows. That's a first breakout. A 3D buy with two arrows on the side, right? Those are, that's the first time it's moving out. But just a 3D buy means this may not be the first signal. It may be a continuation or an add-on signal. So it's amazing how the scanners even can find these for you. So uh, it's never a situation that, oh, I missed the signal. We've got email alerts. We've got voice alerts. This application that scans doesn't even require you to hit the button scan. If the application's open, you set a stock list. It's automatically scanning all the time for you. And it'll pop up an email alert, a voice alert, and tell you RMO 3D buy on, you know, City group, whatever the stock is that generates the signal that is. So there's a voice alert, which is, you know, groundbreaking. I think the whole scanning technology that I deployed into this, mind you, a couple of years ago is when I released this. It, you know, everyone probably looked at it and said, wow, we've not got a scanner like this because unlike a lot of scanners out there, which make you build a scan, you write the code for the scan, then you run the scan then it's all up to you. You put in your conditions. This is all pre-built. We have the RMO pre-built for you. All you choose is give me your list of stocks. Give me the symbol list and the interval you wanted to run. Now, you may say, look, I like to trade both on an intraday as well as an end of day. So I may have, you know, five minute. I may have daily. That's up to you. You can have both running side by side. So the good part is we've gone beyond just giving you or delivering to you explorers, which are manually to be run by you. We've also got the power screener, which will scan for you. We also updated the RMO with what we call a super filter or the ATM RMO template, which further irons out the RMO itself. For example, look over here, the RMO went below zero, above zero, below zero, above zero, a couple of times in this area, in that first half of the chart, but the bars remain red and orange. So what we did was we moved to a four coded bar of four color codes, red for the strongest form of selling, orange for weakness, and then you have a light blue and a dark blue. So if you can see as the market turned light blue and trickled into red, that's the weakness, right? Similarly from when the red moves into an orange and starts moving out into a blue. So it spoke to you much better. The super filter ironed out, you know, a lot of the RMOs signals as well so like you can see over here it went up and down up and down here it just stayed steady and helped you be on one side of the trend so if you look at the nasdaq 100 over here right from 2020 all the way to 2021 uh you know quarter four probably 
you saw that the the RMO was positive. And mind you, this is just a simple daily chart. It's amazing how it kind of stuck its neck out there. Most of that time, 90% of the time, it was above zero. And all you did was, uh, you know, concentrated where to buy, where the buy arrows are. You didn't waste your time on any of the red arrows. Similarly, uh, you know, 2022, which was uh, definitely a weak year, you can see the bars were all red and orange and the RMO was negative. So I think it represents to you right in front of you how it handled data across these two or three years and helped you stay on the right side of that trend. Now, if you look at phases where the market even gets sideways, where you have 40, 50 bars in a sideways zone, where the RMO flipped from negative to positive, now over here, you know, we were flipping colors, but this is the 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 old or the original armor with the super filter. That's all orange. It ironed that whole noise out. So I think what's changed within the super filter is even the price breakout that it's trying to find out. It's tailor made to the stock. So whilst the armor may, may work from to a fixed value, the super filter is actually adjusting its periodicity, its indicator values and optimizing it to the behavior of that particular stock to give it the best fit indicator. It's like putting it that if you put a 13 period moving average on every stock, it's obviously gonna give you different results and different behavior. There may be an 18 period that works well on this equity. So, you know, that's the adjustment, that's the tailor-made fitting that it's doing. So the super filter really elevates you uh, and takes out the noise even in the inbuilt RMO. For example, look at that first part of this box. It's been blue right through, even though the RMO went, if you look down at the x-axis, you know, it went up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, you could filter it out with looking at volume and all, but I think you elevate it with the super filter. Now, today's session is not just to show you how the super filter is so much ahead of the curve than the inbuilt RMO, but uh, you know you can even do a quick comparison and see okay this is the original armor and what you see on the top is the uh, atm super filter the atm armor and that's where you can see okay even this one little patch where i save my skin out of these red bars you know that itself is a big save right but today's session is about showing you how the volume piece can also be integrated so the scanner is there which finds out all the super filter signals so you put in a stock list it automatically searches for you it does block sorting. Now, what's block sorting? If you have a sort, let's say you have the, you know, you know let's say the Dow 30. You make a list of the, the Dow Jones 30 and you can see, okay, majority of this market is light blue and dark blue. There's some orange and very little red. So if that's your list, you can automatically, so it sorts the colors and makes these little blocks for you so that you understand the construction of the market and you will get a feel that, okay, the minute 70% of this is light blue, dark blue, the trend is shifting. Now, what I would strongly also recommend for someone who's trying to just gauge as to where the volume's kicking in, you can add a column called volume breakout. Now, again, this is a tool which very few people are using. The volume breakout can help you define Suppose you want, give me stocks which have uh, the highest volume in comparison to the last five bars. So here you look at this, uh, I've got five over here. That means it's going to compare back to five bars and then it's going to give you a signal that, okay, this is the highest in the last five bars. You may say I wanted 20% more than the moving average. Now it's up to you, you can define this. I would say if I put a 50 period moving average length or a 20 period length, if I got more than 50% of the average volume, you really have a strong stock, right? You, you know that something's cooking and the whole idea is start looking there, start looking at, okay, do I have a new signal that's coming in? Because at least, you know, if money is kind of moving into this stock, obviously some new direction or some new movement is likely to come in. So you can get those trickles of, you know, uh, suddenly being this, the largest volume coming in or, you know, the percentage, uh, increasing so you know that the money is rotating in on the stock and you can set you can see a voice alert or an email alert uh, now we've even got a feature computer on close you may say that if you're using a five minute bar or a 10 minute bar and you're on a live market i recommend you put computer on close on because you know while the bar is forming uh you know it's getting built but if you're on end of day let's say you use daily weekly primarily you don't need computer on closes on you can leave it off because a daily chart you probably see the data once the market's closed right so computer on close is very important for those who are trading a live bar 
because till the bar ends, you haven't really factored in the total volume, right? So uh, you could set these parameters, and I recommend that you definitely want to see something which is higher than the previous five bars. Uh, probably, I would say 20% above the average is too little. Maybe if it's 50% more than the average volume, that's definitely something you want to look at. Uh, and you know you can bring in this element. So today's session was to show you not just how you have an amazing super filter indicator, but add this one column so that you get a feeler as to which stocks are moving. So I think the whole idea is to tell you that our decision of uh, just using price-driven indicators is not enough. We need to bring in all these volume pieces. And the whole philosophy about the ATM as an add-on is to give you some solid core strategies you know, six to seven core strategies is what I'm looking at. I'm not trying to give you a plethora of indicators, even if it may have 35 different studies. The idea is let's look at the core of those indicators. They may be all coming together as, you know, six or seven different templates. And that's what I want to look at, which will help you not just identify the trades. When I say identify, you, we've got a scanner which helps you identify the trades, which automatically runs. You don't need to write any code. You don't need to hit the scan button. If your application is open, the power screener scans it for you. It weights it also because we have scanners to help you weight it. Because imagine when you see five different indicators in tabular form, you understand the weight because you'll say, okay, I've not just got a super filter, but the SWI is also in agreement or the volume breakout is also there. And then the management, the trade management is also fantastic with the trend decider suite. And, you know, we cover that in various other classes. And that is the way that this whole suite of the ATM works. So when you're looking at the RMO ATM3, you are really looking at a system which not only helps you identify and weight those trades, but also manage those trades, all culminating to a trading plan. The whole idea is I'm not going to try and tell you go mix and match and blend as you feel. The whole idea is to give you a constructive mechanism, a rule-based approach towards your trading. And that's what the Armo ATM philosophy is all about. So it's rule-based, effective, simply because it's tailor-made to each equity. It's not like we've just thrown a static value across those indicators. It's literally tailor-made. And that's what makes it so different to any other add-on that's out there, that focus of being a DAC. So all of this is backed with proper scanners, money management techniques, which we discuss. And of course, manuals, videos, and training come with it. And as I've already demonstrated to you, we have not just breakout indicators. We have counter trend studies and volume-driven studies because no system is complete if you have just price breakouts. We need to even uh, further build on it and show you how you manage trades in terms of your exits. And that, again, is something which I take great uh, pride in saying that the ATM can really help you become someone who exits trades so much better. So we've got all the explorers, various 35 different fields within that power screener. We've got the integrated buy and sell, which find out exactly when all those studies come together. But it's really seven core templates that I want you to focus on. All of these are backed with expert advisors, commentary. I think today was just to kind of give you a, a showcase as to how the Armo ATM factors in volume to that degree, where it's not just you know price breakout. And I think that's where it becomes a game changer. This power screener becomes your go-to screen. You can actually put in your positions. I've bought 5,000 shares at this value. It'll write up to calculate your PNL and look at the indicators. The problem is we're all looking at trading screens and news and you know TVs. And I keep motivating people that look, if you really want to be a good trader, sit in front of a screen like this, because this screen talks to you. This screen tells you, are you dormant? Are you active? Are you hyperactive? What's the trend? What's your PNL? We're not interested in, you know what 10 different analysts say in a day you know that's uh, let's switch off the cartoon networks of the world and get focused as to becoming a more solid trader i'll hand over to you jeff and probably you could talk a little bit about the master class that we also have coming up because that would be great follow-up education too absolutely i'd love to um we do have one quick question i was hoping i could get from you right before we left or we did have a question from Amman kapoor uh in india and um, would you be okay taking one question? Can you hear me? Hello, Rahul? 
No. Okay. All right. Hey, if I could get it, uh, can you hear me okay? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of the, I know um, uh, for a fact that one of the reasons Rahul likes to use the uh, uh, the 65 minute chart is because that's so session late uh, for that. Um, uh, I don't know if they had, uh, or for a, uh, that's a divisible by the uh, amount of time. But if you want to email us, we'll actually get an answer for you. And thanks for thanks for the question. So let me go ahead and show my screen. Okay, and uh, let me see. Let me do this real quick. Okay, Rahul does do a really good job uh, of actually talking about RMO, and it is one of our most popular add-ons. Uh, it's the only one that comes with like its own screening app that talk uh, li that literally does actually talk to you. Uh, his methods are fantastic: the breakout catcher, the candle trend indicator, the SWI, the trend decider, the super filter. All of those do a really, really good job in kind of helping you figure out what's going on with the chart. So um, it's a really, really cool add-on. Normally, as you can see right here, it's $129 per month or $13.95 per year. We have a special offer on that right now uh, that we're going to talk a little bit about. But Rahul did also talk about the sessions that we've got coming up, the master class that we've got coming up. And I'm really excited about this because it, I think it's been a few years since we actually put one of these together. But Rahul does a really, really good job of actually going through. So we're going to do a three-session class. May 20th, we're going to start. That's a Saturday. It's going to start at 10 a.m. Eastern time where he's going to do ATM core breakout models. He's going to talk about breakout detection, defined entry and exit models, uh, fake outs and sideways zones. I haven't seen any sideways zones, have we, lately? Uh, refining trades uh, uh, and uh, momentum. Uh, the second session, we're going to do that same day. So it's going to be May 20th, noon Eastern. And he's going to talk about volume integrations uh, to, to well-rounding your trading. And you can kind of read what's going to be kind of covered in here. The thing that I want to talk about is like Rahul does such a thorough job in talking about how to use his indicators and how to implement them in there. The final session we're going to do on the, the next Saturday, which will be Saturday, May 27th. That'll be uh, also 10 a.m. Eastern time. And it's going to be trade detection, integration, management. Where to set, where, this is really where the rubber rates are out, where to put your price targets in, how to have an exit strategy, how to trail a stop loss, re-entry opportunities, when to see them, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And then final thoughts. One of the things that he does a really good job with is, in, is actually kind of answering questions and has a very, very good instructor. Man, I just have something in my throat right now. <laughs> So in any case, I don't think it's the Rona, but um, we will be recording these. Uh, they'll be available for you. Uh, they'll be available uh, for you to review. You'll be able to kind of come ask any questions that you want, and they'll be available forever on your metastock.com uh, account section. So um, three sessions. Uh, uh, normally with those, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cover those with pricing in a minute. In addition to that, as part of the bundle, you're going to want an RMO, and Rahul did do, did do a really good talk, job of talking about what that. So, what we're going to do for the RMO today is it's normally 129 or 13.95 a year. The special offer that we're going to do here uh, at the event today is going to be 99 dollars or 1,069 per year. And I want to encourage you to do that because that's a permanent rate. So if you sign up at the discounted $99 rate, it doesn't go up to $129. That's not a trial. That's just the rate that you pay. Okay. But what I would encourage you to do as well is the training class as well. So if you do um, the RMO as well as the training class, the training classes are normally uh, $499. We'll give you a $100 discount on the training class and the RMO as an extended trial. So what that means is for $497, you're going to get three months of RMO ATM plus a master class that we're going to kind of uh, record and put together and do live here starting on May. Okay, uh, You'll still get that permanent discounted subscription for the uh, after the three months for that $99. You get the um, lifetime discount. Uh, so as long as you're paying for $99 a month, it's not going to go up on there. And you'll get those three live classes that are included. Now, the fact that we're actually giving you 
a three for one uh, or an extended trial for RMO, uh, norm means this value would be normally 886. Uh, you're going to get uh, basically RMO ATM for three months. Uh, all of those live classes recorded access to all of those extended trials, all included as part of that package. So I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, you can do that by giving us a call at 800. 882-3040. Uh, you can also chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. You're going to love these classes. Um, I, I, every time we do them, I go in and I'm in charge of kind of making sure that everything goes well, reading the legal disclaimer as usual. And, uh, but Rahul does such a thorough job. And this is such a great way to try out our most successful subscription add-on. So uh, do it. $497. Uh, One-time cost will save you almost 400 bucks, and uh, it's a great thing. Give it a go. 800-882-3040, metastock.com slash sales chat. So there you go. Uh, uh, Amin Kapoor does ask a question. Uh, I'm not having Metastock. If I want to do RMO ATM, um, do I need Metastock? Yes, absolutely. And yes, we do actually do, we have quite a few, partially very much as a result of Rahul and kind of the work that he's done in India. But we do have really good Indian data. You will need Metastock as part of it to use for ATM, but we do have really good Indian data coverage. So, um, and yeah, we can help you get set up for Metastock if that's what you want to do. Uh, since you're in India, the, uh, the best way to kind of find out more about that is to chat online with us, metastock.com slash sales chat. So thanks for that question. Um, for everybody, we've had a great crowd today. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, either now or in the present, make sure to like that, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. These things help us out quite a bit. We appreciate them. Uh, I want to say thank you for coming today. I want to say thank you for Rahul for being here today. Uh, most of all, stay happy. <laughs> stay healthy. And we'll see you at the next one. Thanks for coming, guys. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you found it instructive and informative. If you did, what I'd like to invite you to do is go ahead and like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal, and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and keep on watching.